Welcome everyone, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Um, please like and subscribe uh, with uh, notifications on if you guys like this content. I like to uh, show things in a little bit of a different way than most people do, um, using different types of analysis. In this one we're going to be looking at logarithmic regression um, of Litecoin. And so I did this for Bitcoin and Ethereum recently. And I was asked to uh, make one for Litecoin, so I've done that. So basically what I did was I fit this, these logarithmic regression lines to, um, to the data and nothing else, no you know, market sentiment or anything else like that. But I just kind of want to go through um, you know, what, basically try to help understand you know, what the price is doing by visually looking at it on a logarithmic regression plot. So um, one of the things we notice is that uh, you know, Litecoin has these halvings, just like Bitcoin does, and it happens approximately every four years. Um, now, you know, Litecoin has this thing where um, it it doesn't really seem to to go through the same exact cycle uh, that some of the other coins do. Um, and in fact, you know, for a lot of the regression curves. Um, you know this this bottom over here would have been much lower on this on this graph, but it, it just seems like it's much higher than than the other coins I've looked at. So, anyways, um, what we're looking at here is uh, trying to determine where Litecoin might be headed if we were to continue um, uh, our current behavior um, in terms of our, our logarithmic regression growth. So, one of the things I guys I want to point out to you guys is how the having affects the price. So back in 2015, you can see that leading up to the halving, we had a, a very large um, increase in price. And you can see that on these curves here, we went up one, two, three, four, okay? On these uh, logarithmic regression lines, we went up four. And then we corrected back down into the halving. So we started going back down before the halving occurred. And then if you fast forward to today, we, you know, here's the halving, and before the halving, we saw this increase. And if you look, we went up one, two, three, four, so the same as over here on these logarithmic regression lines. And then we then corrected down. And in both cases, we corrected down three lines. So you can see one, two, three, ultimately, which led to this, and then currently we're at one, two, three. And you know this is where we currently are, and I've drawn this for some speculation, but we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, um, you know if you look at if you look at the lows here from each cycle, after we have a peak, we have a, a low, then we have kind of like a an intermediate high, um, a local high, uh, where it's just basically the 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 pricing in of the having, which then we see a correction. But you should note that the correction that occurs um, after this run-up in, in anticipation of the halving, the, the correction is um, not nearly uh, as, it, it basically it doesn't get us to where we initially were. So initially we were much lower, we go up, and then ultimately it, it lands us one regression line higher than we were. Um, at least that's what it has done um, uh, so far. So you know, if, if this were to continue to play out, then, you know, in the next bull cycle or the next market cycle, I should say, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see if, if it does a similar thing where it goes up four regression lines before the halving, corrects down into the halving, and you can see that when the halving occurred, it had corrected down two regression lines. So here, from, the, um, from this regression line, we came down two, and then from here, we came down two into the halving. And then after the halving, we essentially oscillated between these two curves and then ultimately came down to this last, um, or the, the second to last regression line. And once we, you know, kind of rode that line, that's ultimately um, right before we saw this massive run up in price. And you can see the same thing potentially happening over here. We came up four regression lines, came down two into the halving. We've come down that other way and we might be oscillating in here. Um, for the remainder of, you know, or the next year, potentially, we might be around this area. Um, and if we were, that would basically put the low, a Litecoin low of around $40, um, potentially, um, and then going all the way up to potentially $55 um, by, the, uh, by 2021. Um, now, if, if we were to um, uh, continue this, uh, 
continue this basically the same pattern, then we might see a a, a run up to the top of this regression line over here, uh, which would be a, a pretty significant run up. I mean, it would be a, a decent percent gain there. Uh, but ultimately, if we were to, to continue um, the same pattern, then we might just be between these two regression lines um, for the next year or so. And, and that's perfectly normal. I'm not here to shill you on any coin. I'm basically here to tell you what I think is, is going to happen. And I, I think that there is a decent amount of evidence that we are just simply repeating what has happened before. And clearly the past does not always predict the future. But, you know, so far, going up four, going down two into the halving, and then going down one more is has been repeated. And all of this was following a, um, a, a very strong uh, bear market. So just keep this in mind. So this, you know, past this point, it's just speculation. Um, we might, you know, we might see this oscillate between these two regression lines and we might see this ultimate peak which um, would potentially get us to around uh, $1,538. I Basically I just I got that by um, looking at uh, the percent gain here and I, I essentially um, I, I didn't use the same percent gain because if you look at other cryptos um, from cycle to cycle they they become less and less um, so this is basically about a 300 percent increase from here to here um, and, you know, I think this is, is definitely possible that we see, you know, a $1,500 Litecoin. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, you know, clearly, in, for, for, many, for many cryptos, um, or at least for Bitcoin and, and Ethereum, um, they, they kind of fall down these regression lines. Um, but I don't think, I don't really think that's, um, I don't think it's the same story with Litecoin exactly. Um, uh, you know, you can see that here we started way higher than the other ones um, with than, than uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. So these regression lines aren't ex they don't exactly I don't I don't think they have the same uh, they're representing the same thing um, when comparing with when comparing um, to Bitcoin. Um, so I this is basically my idea of what could potentially happen. Probably not a lot of uh, not a lot of stuff to happen for the next year. Um, maybe there will be. Um, but I could see us just, you know, remaining between these two lines and then seeing a, a pretty big run up, uh, maybe sometime in early 2021, which might, you know, it might correspond to Bitcoin reaching a previous all time high. Um, now, if Bitcoin were to reach an all time high before early 2021, then, you know, I think this you could there's there'd be evidence to say that we can move this um, up some and we might see a, a spike before that. Because typically Litecoin does really well once Bitcoin reaches a previous all-time high, um, so that's what we're going to be ultimately looking for for this spike. Um, so just you know, be ready. I think we have time. Bitcoin's currently around 8,500, uh, and you know I don't. I, I think we have plenty of time before it gets to 20 grand. Um, so just hang tight, and you know we'll we'll update these videos in the coming months. Um, so again, if you guys like the content, please like and subscribe, and I will be sure to, to keep you updated. Alright guys, bye.